Hey everyone in the world of cloud computing, here are a few tech news highlights from this week. I'm Brad Nelson of Nelson Hilliard, cloud computing recruitment specialist placing great people in cloud, IoT, fintech and AI. Thank you all for your support on social media and subscribing to our blogs and YouTube videos. We are now on iTunes with all our podcasts and shows and there is a link below in the description box. Watch out for the new weekly cloud computing shows with David Linthicum, who is the world's number one cloud industry expert and internationally recognized thought leader. And don't forget to like, subscribe, comment and share these videos with your friends and with your colleagues. This week sees the Australian government drafting laws, forcing Facebook and Google to reveal encrypted data. Technology companies, including Facebook and Google, will be forced to give the Australian security agencies access to encrypted data under new legislation to be introduced by the Turnbull government. At this stage, the government has refused to comment on how the security agencies would access the data. The Cyber Security Minister, Angus Taylor, said on ABC Radio that the bill would modernise existing laws to give security agencies access to information that's transferred through encrypted messaging apps. He said the key point here is that we need to modernise our laws and get access to information for holding criminals and terrorists to account for investigations and gathering evidence. Nigel Fair from the Centre of Internet Safety at the University of Canberra said, if the legislation avoided having to use a backdoor entry to encrypted data, then it was likely it would use a front door. What we're probably talking about here is a straight up agreement with the device manufacturer to enable law enforcement agencies at some stage to get access to the data. This week sees a MasterCard patent that would put credit cards on a public blockchain. MasterCard is exploring the use of public blockchains in securely verifying payment cards at the point of sale public documents show. According to a patent application filed by the US Patent and Trademark Office and released on Thursday, MasterCard has come up with a conveyance and retrieval processes to verify users' payment credentials over a publicly accessible blockchain. Although whether an actual product will arise from the concept, the work marks a notable effort by MasterCard to utilize a public blockchain to potentially improve a common issue with its core card business. According to some sources, card skimming at ATMs and points of sale across all providers sees around 2 billion US dollars stolen per year globally. This week sees potential Jedi Cloud contract looming in a big way for customers and providers. The Department of Defense has the potential to send shockwaves through both sides of the public sector IT and private sector IT world by a looming decision. The Department of Defense is preparing to accept bids for a potential 10-year or 10 billion US dollar joint enterprise defense infrastructure or JEDI contract for cloud services as it modernizes and unifies its IT infrastructure. The JEDI cloud deal would have less impact on AWS today as the company brought in more than 5 billion US dollars in revenue in its latest quarter alone. Still, the 10 billion US dollar contract would dwarf the 2013 CIA deal and similarly echo across the entire cloud market. AWS isn't the only cloud vendor making inroads with the federal government. Microsoft signed a deal in May reportedly worth hundreds of millions of dollars to provide cloud-based services to the US intelligence community. The Jedi cloud contract would be an even bigger feather in Microsoft's cap as it tries to lure companies to its Azure public cloud. Andrew Bartels from Forrester's research said, if the award goes to Amazon, it would tend to expand its lead in the market. If it goes to Microsoft, it would boost Microsoft Azure, not into the lead, but it would make it more of a two-horse competition. Google recently pulled out of another defense contract amid employee concerns about the use of its AI capabilities, and it hasn't said publicly whether it will seek this Jedi Cloud contract. This week sees Andy Warhol art to be sold for Bitcoin via Eurythium's blockchain. The Daddiani Fine Art in London's upmarket Mayfair will put 49% of the Warhol work up for sale in cryptocurrencies including Bitcoin and Eurythium on the 20th of June this year. The piece is currently valued at 5.6 million, that's about 730 Bitcoin. The reserve price for the piece is set at $4 million and all buyers must comply with local regulation to prevent money laundering. It's not the first time art has been bought with crypto. Four paintings were bought with cryptocurrencies at an art stage Singapore in January. 
but the Warhols may be the most high profile for the most money. I'm Brad Nelson of Nelson Hilliard. I hope you enjoyed watching this week's news. And remember to like, subscribe, comment, and share these videos with your friends and with your colleagues. You can also connect with me on LinkedIn, find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and also check out the latest shows with David Linthicum and the podcast in the description box below. Until next week, be good, be safe, and keep our clouds secure.